it feels like the animals are just here putting on a show for us. It's honestly incredible. Like we're watching this colourful marabou, like just a few feet away, dipping its beak into the shallow waters looking for food. There's a peacock in the distance just doing its peacock dance. An eagle just flew up over our heads. Everything's just alive and amazing. It's so cool. Oh, and in the distance over here. whole bunch of buffalo that just swam the entire width of that lake. Just incredible. Hey guys and welcome back to Live Lemons Travel. We're Kit and Lee. We previously drove our car camper from the Arctic Circle to Croatia, but this time we're backpacking Asia, with budget at the very core of our travels. If you missed our last episode, we're in beautiful Sri Lanka. You can catch up by clicking the link in the corner of the screen. After exploring Sri Lanka's incredible southwest coastline, we're ready to head inland, specifically to Ella, a small town situated high up in the mountains, surrounded by jungle and tea plantations. But before we arrive in Ella, we need to travel 150 kilometers across South Sri Lanka. We're pretty sure that we have found the best way to do this, since there are no trains that cover this area of the country. Enjoy the video and thank you so much for watching. <laughs> hey guys, let me catch you up. We're in Dikwela. The next part of our travel journey is us getting to Ella, which is a five hour drive inland. You can't get a train. We kind of just assumed that a lot of places would be connected by train in Sri Lanka, but that's just not the case. Ways that people would normally get from the coast to Ella would be a taxi, which would cost about £65 and take about four or five hours. Another option we saw would be to get a bus. It would take like three buses and maybe like nine or 10 hours to get there. Really uncomfortable. Another string to this story, when you take the route from Dick Weller to Ella, you literally pass this amazing national park called Uduwalawe. In Uduwalawe, you can see elephants and peacocks and eagles, so many birds, buffaloes. Lee and I always knew before we came to Sri Lanka that we would love to do a safari. Obviously with a lot of our videos we're showing how much we're spending because we know that the less we spend the longer our travels will last. We only do it if we're like oh my god I need to do that. When we realised that we would literally be passing Uduwalawe to get to Ella we couldn't miss this opportunity. The next part to this is trying to figure out how we could get transport from Dick Weller to Ella, being dropped off at the safari to enjoy a safari, having someone wait for us while we do that, and then continue to take us on our journey to Ella. We came across this awesome, unique little company called Tuk Tuk Safari. Five star Google reviews, attractive price actually. The total cost of our trip with Tuk Tuk Safari was 56,000 Sri Lankan rupees. This works out at around £140. For £140, we got picked up from our accommodation in Dick Weller and transported over 150 kilometres to Ella in a totally unique Tuk Tuk. Included in this price were our safari entrance tickets, a private jeep, a guide, breakfast, and our drop off and pick up from the safari. When pricing up the safari alone, this came out at about £70 even without the transport, and to do the safari through a tour company would cost double this number. This is how we justified the total cost of £140 for using Tuk Tuk Safari. Tuk Tuk Safari absolutely made our experience. It was so much fun. We were not sat in a car all day. I'll let the video explain. Enjoy. As you can see right next to me here, I've got a big bag of rice with my drone, drone controller and a battery inside it because I was flying my drone tonight over the Quella Beach and Hiraketia Beach in the south of Sri Lanka and about three seconds after I landed my drone on the beach, a wave just engulfed it and I saw it coming at like the last second and a reactionary reflex, I went to just pick up the drone with the hand that had my remote controller in it and as it turned out both the drone and the controller got 
submerged in seawater, which is probably the worst thing it could be sub submerged in. Just gonna leave it overnight and see what happens. Morning guys. Hello. <laughs> so it's been a 4 a.m. start for us. I think our, our eyes are still a bit sleepy, aren't they? Yeah, we expected a few beers yesterday, didn't we? And then it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We met up with some friends that I met six years ago in the Philippines, which was just so wonderful. We had about four beers, didn't we? So we didn't get as much sleep as we anticipated. We've just got to the park. It seems that we're kind of maybe waiting around now for our jeep to fill up. This is our jeep. And little doggo here. It's so lovely. There's another puppy here. There's another one. <laughs> we're not really sure what's happening. We're just waiting around for I think, I think he's just going in to pay our entrance fee. Ah. And like the fees and stuff. And I, I literally think we'll be going. I don't think there's anyone else getting on our jeep. It'd just be us. Which would be nice. If that's the case, that would be lovely. We're sat right at the front, so we've got a nice view of there he is. whatever we see. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, this is our Jeep guy, our <laughs> driver for the day. If you want to take the photo of the Jeep, uh, do you want to photo with the Jeep? Yeah, that'd be lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. I take it like this. That's lovely. This but the last one is big. Oh, okay, I love cool. it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll do it this way. <laughs> cool. Cool. Yes. Nice. Thanks so much. Okay. We had a bit of a problem this morning because this very special trip that we booked, we actually booked like this kind of big, longer, more comfortable it's like a tuk -tuk. Retro, retro tuk tuk, isn't it, with the convertible roof? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that it's light, we will get some footage of the tuk tuk when we finish the safari. But this big tuk tuk with the convertible roof, right, yeah. will take us all the way to Ella after the safari. And when they arrived this morning, it was a regular tuk tuk, which isn't a huge problem, but it's not what we paid for. It's not so comfortable. Me and Lee kind of text the guy and was like, mm, thank you, but this isn't what we paid for. Um, so they did sort it out quickly, didn't they? They gave us the big tuk tuk. That's sorted. Yeah. Yeah, we'll show you more of that when we finish the safari. Ooh, I'm excited, are you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've already seen one effort as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there was just an elephant just passing down down this road a moment ago. Crazy. <laughs> How amazing is this? <laughs> a moment ago we heard like a peacock or something and the man said it's peacock and that male peacocks can change the colour of their feathers mm -hmm. but females can't. No. Was he on about? Are you sure he wasn't on about chameleons at that point? Oh. Yeah, it was definitely on about chameleons. I think he said feathers. No, chameleons. Oh. <laughs> bird that we saw first is called a little green bee eater. It eats all kind of insects including mosquitoes but it especially likes bees and we just learned that mongoose have poisonous teeth and they will kill cobras.
So our lovely guide Sarah explains that we'd probably come to a lake first as we've got the best chance of seeing crocodiles in the morning. There's lots of lovely birds here though. I think we can see some deer in the distance there, let me show you. It feels like the animals are just here putting on a show for us, it's honestly incredible. Like we're watching this colourful marabou like just a few feet away, dipping its beak into the shallow waters looking for food. There's a peacock in the distance just doing its peacock dance. An eagle just flew up over our heads. Everything's just alive and amazing. It's so cool. Lee and Sarah have spotted crocodiles, but with my moly eyes, I have not. Over in the distance, a male peacock making his feathers all pretty and like doing a little dance for the female peacock, but she wasn't interested. And the peacocks are surrounded by loads of deer. It's just really, really cool. Everyone's just living in harmony. Sarah tried to use Lee's telephoto camera to see a kingfisher, but he couldn't quite see it. You have a nice time, Lee. I did, I did get some. Yeah, I'm enjoying my little. Well, we was given a, a light breakfast. I think it's a big breakfast, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Pancake batter with the coconut sambal in the middle and honey. The coconut sambal is like desic desiccated, is that the right word? I have no idea what that like, is. Coconut, <laughs> coconut bits, they're sweet. It's really nice anyway, I enjoyed it. And the sun just feels so beautiful. Apart from the Jeep engines, it's so peaceful here. Listening to all the birds. Oh, I forgot to tell you, oh, wow. um, Lee spotted a crocodile. Ooh. Um, so there is a crocodile in the water. I have finally seen a crocodile with my mole eyes. <laughs> We've just learned from Sarah that they don't have alligators here, they only have crocodiles. I can't remember the difference. But the crocodiles don't like fresh meat. So if they like kill a baby buffalo for food, they'll wait three or four days and then eat it. How strange is that? <laughs> Animals are weird. They'd love you, babe, you're not fresh. <laughs> Thank you. 
So this is our crazy cool top top that we drove here in. <laughs> Look at those comfy seats. It's really nice, isn't it? And a little ledge. Yeah, I think this roof, the roof opens as well. Yeah, maybe a bit later we'll be able to show you how we, you can like poke your head out the roof and see around, it's really cool. I hope you can hear me over the wind. We just wanted to show you some of the features of this XL Tuk Tuk that we're travelling close to four hours in today. Four hours from Dick Weller to Ella is our full journey today. So firstly, we've got extra leg room. Yeah, plug socket ahead. I don't know if it works, but it's a plug socket. Extra space in the boots because normally our bags would be a major squash to get in. The seats are also super squashy and super deep compared to normal like top top benches. Probably can't be in it compared to it normal is, top yeah. top. It's got like a headrest and everything. It's nice. We've also got a little tray. This is like the business class of top tops, right? <laughs> no, that's a good, uh, good comparison. I've never flown business class. Oh, what? I've never flown business class. Though, I thought so. you said lizard class then. <laughs> That's all I've <laughs> learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, but this is nice. It's it's cool. <laughs> right, guys, this is where the magic starts to happen. We have got a roofless tuk tuk. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to stick the head out first? <laughs> stand up, stand up, stand up. Can you just stand up at any time? Does it matter now? Oh, I don't know. We can stand, stand up at any time. It's OK to stand up at any time. OK, cool. Stand up, stand up. Yeah. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> 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 
with the pony. No hands! No hands! <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day! Happy Valentine's Day! <laughs> <laughs> What's that smell? Can't fight it today. It smells really nice, but perhaps like a herd or... So... We have a guide. Can you show us the way? No? Okay. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Literally as we was driving down the road, like to your left and right are tea plants, which was really cool. Just arrived in our room. I don't think it looks like the photos, but it's it's perfect for what we need. Yeah. Is it? Two two double beds. Yeah, we've got a double bed each. <laughs> That's quite nice. Yeah. What you get for was it twenty five pound for three nights, including yeah. including breakfast. Oh my god, it's got breakfast yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Good. A few moments later. Hi guys. I think I've put on weight. You think you put on weight? <laughs> no, I really think I have. We quite literally have. Too many noodles and yeah, rice. It's weird, isn't it? After the first week, we both felt like we'd actually lost a bit of weight and we were feeling quite good. Yeah. And then like the I think we were exercising more. Maybe the last week and a half. <clears throat> we both feel a bit tubs now, don't we? Yeah. Anyway, I came on the camera to explain. <laughs> We're just leaving our accommodation in Ella after one night. We, we wasn't expecting anything fancy, but it was so, so damp, which we really struggled with. Like, my hair was wet in the night, um, and I, like, our clothes were wet. Do you think he yeah. was listening? I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, literally uh, we've been there less than 24 hours, haven't we? And everything feels like so damp. Yeah, so, we actually made the executive decision to just stay there for one night and move on to another location. But what was really awkward and funny this morning is that the breakfast that they put on was honestly wonderful. Yeah. And he was like the owner was super friendly. Yeah, really cared about his reviews and stuff like that. And he was like, "Oh, you're checking out this morning. So where are you going next?" And we we crumbled, didn't we? Yeah. And I was like, Lee, where are we going next? She because just, obviously yeah, we're going to a different... Yeah, she very swiftly palmed it off onto me to let me to deal with the answer. <laughs> I just, I told a white lie and said that we're going on to Nuara earlier, but... At which point he started asking us which train we're getting, <laughs> because of, we know that you have to book tickets for this train in advance. And we're like, oh... He really put our flagging not... skills to the test, didn't Oh my he? God. <laughs> we're like, oh, we're not sure. Maybe we'll, we'll go to the room and check in a minute, but I uh, just had to keep it really kind of casual, but... I feel really bad for not telling the truth, but we really didn't want to hurt his feelings, but it's not a nice accommodation. And then to make We're not going to call them out, but we just thought we'd take you on this little reality moment of travel where and, yeah. we're moving again after one night. The breakfast and they were, were lovely. They were really friendly, he wanted to speak to us and chat to us, but the room, it was just, 
just not what we expected in terms of the photos and stuff. Look, at the end of the day, we're paying, what, eight pounds a night for a room. We don't mind if it's dark or dingy. We don't mind if the beds aren't comfy. We don't even mind a little bit of uncleanliness, but when it's damp, it just gets into everything. Yeah. And Lee made a good point just before we left that because he's been trying to get his drone working since the, yeah. the water accident, the lights have come on, but it's not working properly. And Lee said, this probably isn't the best room to try and get my drone working again since yeah. it's so damp. Yeah, exactly. But it's been sat in rice for over a day now. Oh yeah, at least 24 hours. Probably needs more, but I'm not carrying around a couple of kilos of rice for No, <laughs> that stuff's heavy. I just have to buy some more later. <laughs> but I think at this point I'm kind of resigned to the fact that it's kaput. But it's insured, so now we've just got to explore what the options are in getting it replaced whilst I work. Catch you in a bit, because my arm's aching from the bags and the camera. Hopefully the next accommodation is a, an improvement, at least on the damp front. Let's hope.